Hartnell. Uh, he was absolutely adorable. He, I, I didn't understand it when later on I heard people saying bad things about him. I couldn't. I was very upset because he and I developed a really strong sort of grandfatherly, granddaughterly relationship, and uh, we had we had a shared interest in horses. Mind you, mine was riding them. His was watching them race, race racing on. <laughs> in fact, that was the only time we had any bone of contention when I'd never betted on anything before ever. And I said, why don't I have a bet? And he said, yeah, okay, fine. I'll sort it out for you. I said, okay. He said, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know. I don't know anything about betting. So as a joke, he said, why don't you do an accumulator? I said, what? Do you know what an accumulator is? Anybody, either of you? No, I don't bet, sorry. <laughs> oh, there you are. Well, I'll tell you what it is. Um, you, you bet on it and it's just like a million to one chance that you're gonna get something from it. So anyway, what happens is you put a bet to say that I think that these in this race, these three horses will come first, second, third. You know, you predict which horses are gonna come first, second, third. And simply by, by going like that with a pin, ding, 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 ding. I, I came up with three names, right? Well, I won it. <laughs> I won a lot of money on it. These three horses did come <laughs> first, second, and third in the Grand National, of all things, which is totally unpredictable anyway, but it was pure chance, no knowledge, and because Bill used to study form. He used to be very serious about it, you know, which jockey was going to ride him, what his bloodlines were, uh, what his form on previous races were, et cetera, et cetera. I knew nothing of that. I just put the pin in the paper and said, I gave that one. <laughs> Believe it. <laughs> I said, no mind, Bill, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time he was a bit ah uh, with me. How did you do this and not me? <laughs> what about Jacqueline Hill? Because she just seems like she was lovely. Jackie Hill was an absolute sweetheart. She was a great giggler and uh, she was very concerned that everybody was happy and fine. She was like a mother hen, you know. If we came in sneezing, are you all right? She she had a load of things in her bag, which would be okay for a sore throat, a headache, or whatever it was, was ailing you. She was lovely. But the thing I remember about Jackie most is that obviously we used to chat about things we'd done in the past. And she had a bad experience once or twice in one or two of the things that she'd done when she'd been um, coming as a visiting actor into a cast that had been doing it for some time and they developed a group and they were a bit of a sort of clique and uh, so she what didn't feel welcomed into the cast and she said we must always make sure that everybody who comes into our cast is felt welcomed I said yes sure good idea fine so every time anybody came in run up some big hard knocking them for six you know? <laughs> so anyway that didn't stand me in very good stead I got a bit of a reputation for being somebody who was something other than I was because I went up hugging everybody all the time. <laughs> anyway, so she, I thought that was lovely of her to make sure that we did that. And we did. We welcomed everybody and try and made them feel part of the, of the gang straight away, you know, because we were such a strong, tight group. You know, it could have appeared like that. I said William Russell too. I mean, the, the four of you with William Russell as well? Russ, yeah, Russ was gorgeous because I was I had mad crush on him because he was super duper gorgeous he really was <laughs> lovely guy and I was I wasn't 16 but I mean you know I, I, I was much younger in those days and susceptible to a gorgeous guy and he was very very gorgeous and we, we all liked each other very much and bounced off each other very much and I think it came across looking at them you know I, I still see them occasionally now and it seems, I think, that we're, we're quite a smooth, tightly knit group. If you enjoyed what you heard in this clip from the Sirens of Audio podcast, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you never miss out on another episode from us. And if you want to find out more about us, including our back catalogue of episodes, you can head over to sirensofaudio.com.